Okay, guys, welcome back to uh, our uh, our special on our Tim Keefe experimental TTS tournament decks. Uh, I'm going to let Jose take over because he's going to be showcasing his cool bar list and his thoughts on the event, kind of like I did in the Yoshi Mitsu video. So, Jose, just fucking, I'm going to be myself, and you go do your thing. All right, so I woke up one day, and I said I didn't want to die to Agra. And the way, the, the conclusion I came up with that is that I wanted to play Kuwabara. Kuwabara is a character that uh, I had a little bit of a funny history with, where uh, when Bromley was trying to make me branch out into playing something, literally anything else other than Yusuke, he added me a Kuwabara deck, and then Goose turned to me, and I was like, ah, sick, dude, he draws five cards and dies. Great character. <laughs> Beautiful. But, like, uh, after, after, like, playing him a little bit and building him and drinking him on water, it's a character that I actually really learned to enjoy playing. So, yeah, he's just, he's just a cool dude. He's a rude-ass deck. Uh, Brumley and I were playing some very mean decks for aggro players uh, this tournament. For sure. For very different reasons. And the really funny thing is that Kuwabara has such a horrible Yoshimitsu matchup where Brumley needs to check real bad and I have to draw real hot to like, really get into him. Which is funny because he's maining four Shokan Princes, so... The, the, hard, the hard and subtle of the deck is very simple. You have to play four Generous Gambler. Because this is the only way your attacks are getting speed and the only way you're blocking things. Kuwabara gets phase downs very easily, even though a lot of them are attacks he doesn't want to blow up. But in, a, in an emergency, when you need to get something to hit or when you need something blocked, you can just generous gambler, pop a thing, do its work. Uh, it also synergizes extremely well with this card right here, Future Poolside Date, because Poolside does the most tilting thing a Kuwabara player can do, which is it heals you. Uh, <laughs> if you if you ever play a multiple string into Kuwabara, and he puts a pool side on top, you're healing him every time that you attack him. You're doing nothing. You're helping him out. It's like playing against Faye. It's horrible. Uh, <laughs> it also has a very relevant enhance on it, where you discard a card for minus three speed, which is a little absurd uh, after Kuwabara gets an HES turn down, because he might have, like, six cards in his hand, and he just can start discarding them for, like, further advantage by discarding a pool side or, like, just blocking. And then you need to play four ages and wise because this is the water symbol, and we have four low blocks in here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the water symbol's low blocks are four ages and wise and four air ground smash. And if you're playing a reversal deck, you can play scratch glissando if you want. Uh, we also have emergency rations, which we'll talk, we'll talk about later because this card was hype all day. But it's it's like the other. There's ten low blocks in this deck, so you have to play ages and wise for that reason, and also because. As a five-hander, you need to protect your defensive pieces the most that you can, and it's the best answer to Tagura Brothers. Um, that are the bladed rod, which is weird, and uh, the, like moonset. Yeah, one thing I'll add to what you're saying is is that Gambler is is like very very good by itself, right? But it, when you yeah. play it with C Salika, it's just nuts, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Well, we'll get to C Salika yeah. when we get to C Salika. Yeah. And, and then the attacks, just in general, are all just printed. Fabulously fast, right? So, like, two speed destroying a foundation seems kind of bad until you're like, well, this is actually an eight mid eight, or this is a yeah. six size six. Like, they're, they're already very, very fast. It's kind of like the Raptor situation where you're like, this Hurricane of Death was six low 11, but it's actually, you know, eight low 11. And that, that gets I, you there. I, I have a screenshot of a 14 mid sword thrust for lethal. Oh, Jesus <laughs> like, Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Like, think, things get really fast when gamblers on board. Uh, for the three O's, we have two like two of my favorite cards. Royal Bodyguard. Uh, stop your pool. Please end your turn. Stop attacking me. Kuwabara already discourages your opponent from attacking just because his face is so powerful. And I, I, mean, I should talk about his face right after the three O's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot. I just assumed everyone knows what Kuwabara did. But, like, you know, this thing disrupts combo, makes attacks harder. Uh, if you're going for a reversal kill, it can actually make the reversal unblockable, which is pretty pretty good. And in a situation when your opponent has a very fat uh, staging area and their attack just isn't that big, you can actually minus damage to their attack so that mm -hmm. instead of dealing printed, you stick nothing. Right. Uh, the other three of is my favorite water card, Pure of Heart. Uh, this is just a fantastic Libra card, man. This is a zero of that just completely demolishes the staging area sometimes. Like, very, very often uh, I was hearing players complain that they were playing a very sort of like enhanced focus deck where their hands was just getting cancelled by things on board. They just didn't have you know, they didn't have enough answers for Venomous, enough answers for Dark Staff Karma, enough answers for uh things that cancel enhances. But if they have a Venomous and you want to get an Aircraft Smash going, you just like go No Venomous. 
<laughs> what are you gonna do about it? Yeah, what are you gonna do, dude? Like very often, my opponent built a Dark Side Karma and had an AGS in hand. It was like you know, play AGS, pure hard did Dark Side Karma, ready pure hard with AGS draw three. Yeah, it's Jesus, dude. And, and that's uh, not even to talk about the the part of the card that people really complain about, which is yeah, that it just dumpsters discard decks, right? Right. Uh, I wouldn't want to be the guy running discard into into a water character because who we. Uh, Pure Heart is just great in all of its symbols. It's a great offensive slash defensive piece. Like, you know, get saying that your opponent doesn't get to use confronting Jedi during this attack can be honestly very huge. Just like saying that they don't get to use Dark Star Come during this attack can be very huge. Uh, Pivoting to Kuwabara. Yeah, uh, I forgot to talk about this character. Uh, Kuwabara is a 532 that people just hate running into you know you're running an aggro based deck you want to put numbers on your things and then Kuwabara just says that you don't get to put numbers on your things or even worse you do it and it just doesn't matter uh commit a foundation to for, to, to deal printed damage is an incredibly powerful effect but it can be played around in various ways like you know you're, a lot of attacks are just printed very huge nowadays or like your opponent can just throw more attacks than you have foundations to commit, which actually is something that I ran into uh, against Mike Hardeman's Cassandra when he multiple nine a punch walk against me. <laughs> or uh, you know when I run to Mark Tyner just straight up doing the longest throw string I've ever seen in my life, which was like three tombstone stunners, uh, a swallow your soul, a vicious madness, and then he failed the check for from science. Jesus. Yeah, that was that was a long string. Uh, that was six out of his seven cards, dude. Yep. <laughs> uh, last card on his hand, it was uh, it was a Dreaming of Becoming Hold that he used new enhancements to build in. Oops. Yeah. So that's 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 a response on it, and the the way that you play around this response because a lot attacks are very printed very huge is that you block things, which sounds crazy, but what? <laughs> you know, cool bar yeah. can block. Kubar can block, dude, and he can block very well because of generous gambler and a lot of tools that he gets. Right. And when Kubara blocks, you know, it's honestly double the starting because, man, I thought this was going to deal printed, but it dealt zero. I feel stupid. Right. Uh, my actual favorite ability on this character, though, is the once per turn hands, where after your attack resolves, you build it down, you save it for later. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, gotta you know, save this thing for later. Like, the, over here in Kubara, it says that he's a five-hander, but it's, that actually should just say stage. Because the whole point of Kuwabara is that you build an incredibly offensive hand in your staging area and you go pick it up and you go use it and you kill your opponent with it. Mm -hmm. And that in hands is actually the reason why Kuwabara is even allowed to play two six diffs as a four of and a three of in this character. Right. Because he's going to build these down later. So they're actually five diffs. And especially the Aragorn Smash turns into a four diff, which is just insane, actually. <laughs> <laughs> And then the, another very important enhance in Kuwabara that people forget is that you're not allowed to play Reduction into him because he has Desperation in hands once per turn, add a Foundation when staging to hand, which either kills you because he's going to loop Air Ground Smash or loop Sword Thrust or loop something that he has saved in staging for three turns, or he's going to get a very important defensive piece that he's going to get to use against you. Uh, part of the reason why I was so happy playing Kuwabara in Retro is that we get Left, left for Dead, which left for that is just Kuwabara's Desperation Enhance on an E commit. Pretty good. Which, which is pretty good. Especially when you're getting reversals with it for no reason. It's it's, it's honestly quite powerful. Yeah. So that's Kuwabara. Like, his whole game plan is based around saving attacks for later, taking printed damage from things, and just, like, being able to disable your opponent's aggro and making them fit play a much more complicated game. Right. For the two of us, we have uh, these boys right here. Search for Salvation... Uh, High Street Adventures, pretty good. Uh, enhances on the attacks, also pretty good. Kuwabara can't afford to take just just an 8 damage attack sometimes. You know, you don't want your opponent to get enhanced upon it. And if your opponent has a very strong combo or very strong enhance on an attack, you can just say, no, I'll take printed. Which I was going to do anyway, but now you don't get to have the advantage of getting used the enhances on it. Uh, I didn't get to use the, enhan the other enhance on Search for Television very much today. Didn't run into a lot of face down decks. Or the ones I did just had face up raise all the time. But it's very relevant. It also has a too low block. A too high block, which is... It's good. It's real good. Uh, God of Thunder is insane. Uh, that's nothing new. Uh, God of Thunder is especially insane in a deck that has a, a card that builds in three phase downs committed. 
I insert that longer, so you can just extend your attack turns, extend your Kubobara responses, and most importantly, blow up uh, blow up poolside dates. <laughs> so very good. Uh, the newest card that has come out recently is Slay Right Stowaway, and oh boy, what a card! I saw a lot of people use it very well. A lot of people try to quote unquote abuse it by putting it in aggro decks that want to get momentum to do you know really funny things. But the the greatest use I found out of Slay Right Stowaway is that it was the best tutive morning the lost I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> I I I killed Mike Hardiman because he had like he had four momentum and I flipped it to give my sword thrust six damage. Then I built one in with Kuabara sword thrust and I flipped it for six damage and it certainly was unblockable for lethal. Yeah, it's a big card. It's a very big card. It's I think a very that, big card. Yeah, people people got a little bit lost in the sauce with the response on it, right? And no yeah. doubt it's incredible. That should have probably said, like, you know, when you destroy this or E-destroy or something like that. Yeah. But it's, it's uh, the enhance is, is nothing to scoff at. It says two damage by itself, and that's a lot for flip. But also so, plus X, dude, plus, plus X is infinite. It's infinite. Yeah, it's infinite. <laughs> so uh, very interesting thing about this card. It says playable while committed, which I just don't understand. <laughs> I I don't know why you can do that. For half of the tournament, I thought you couldn't do that because I just assumed, hey, there's no way to spell well committed, but then turns out it is. Yeah, it's a it's a strong card. Uh, they wanted to, they wanted to sell their promos, dude. They want to sell their promos. It was definitely intended to work with generous gambler because why would you have to put it flip itself, especially well committed, right? Right. Uh, very powerful. Uh, on the defense, it was great because I could blow it up with generous gambler or god of thunder to get a momentum to and use on you know on royal bodyguard. bodyguard. Uh, and the offense. Uh, there's a very powerful combo with it where you use a leakage to flip it to get momentum, blow it up with a reverberate to get momentum, and then use multiple two for free. Oh, Jesus. Which a lot of decks were doing on the offensive. You know, Spike 2 can do it. Uh, Spike 1 can do it very easily. Uh, any deck that just runs Cease a can do it very easily. So it's just, you know, free reverberate, just add water. Just add water, baby. Venomous. Yo, we hate drawing cards. <laughs> uh, so we just play Venomous so our opponent doesn't get to do it. Uh, there are a lot of very powerful enhances that rely on adding cards to your hand, and Venomous gets to cancel them for free. Uh, in Retro, we had Codred Handed, which is more powerful than Venomous solely because it gets looped by Kuwabara. Mm. But, you know, people want to run Power of the Abyss against me, and I don't want to let them. So that's that's Venomous. There you go, dude. All right, Left to Die. Uh, this is Diet Left for Dead, which has a very similar name for what I can only assume is a very funny joke for people at Jasko. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> left to die has the enhance on left for that, except it has the uh, stipulation that an attack needs to not be blocked for you to be able to do it. So it's a lot less on demand. However, the really cool thing about left to die is that it says an attack. So you can t tank one for printed and get a foundation, get the foundation that you committed with Kuabara into your hand. So it's like, you know, you're only losing one foundation. Or you can hit someone with something, they don't block. Ooh, I'm going to get this back. So it's also very powerful. Uh, it has a very interesting enhance on it, which is you. Uh, it's got a moment to ready itself, which is a lot more relevant to Cutman than it is to me. But it's still it's still very good in hands. Uh, just in case that you want to be able to loop two things or use like desperately needs to ready a foundation. Uh, it's a very good card. Left to die. It's always like the newest inclusion to the deck aside from Stowaway. Away. Uh, it did work today. It, it it did work during the tournament. Emergency rations. Man, what a beating. Uh <laughs> Emergency Rations is a card that I honestly haven't seen people play very often. I know Bromley uh, wanted me to play it in my good use deck, the original build, because he, has, he just has a very relevant response on it, which is after your opponent plays an ability on a non-character card in the staging area, they don't get to do that anymore for the rest of the turn. And they don't, don't get to play that enhance and that ability anymore. They don't get to play any abilities on that card. So, for example, I played against Mike Hardiman. He used the enhance on Owl Shield to make a check. Uh, to see if he got an asset, and I responded emergency rations, which means he had minus four speed suddenly online, and I was able to kill him with my big damage sword thrust. I played against a Siegfried that had three saintly beasts on hold. He used the deadlock in hands once, he loses out on six speed for the rest of the turn. Like, this is, like, this is a card that just allows you to just outplay your opponent in very weird ways, but just deciding they don't get to use the abilities on one of their cards anymore. In a way, it does the same thing Pure of Heart is doing, but it does it reactively. It doesn't stop them from using the enhance, but it stops them from using it again. Yeah, and also on any card in the staging area that has the thing, <laughs> yep. right? I had multiple yeah. telekinetic masteries out against Keenan. 
uh, and he had emergency rations, so I had to yep. decide where I wanted my one response, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it's just, it's like, Garrett Brett, I think, plays like 4X of this card anytime he can, because it's, right. it's that good, right? Um, that good. I, I almost played only one, but I convinced myself that I needed two. Right. And thank God, because it was just great all day. Just great all day. Uh, I guess just a lot of... Uh, a lot of decks. Uh, Cutman had three left to die on board. He only got to use one. <laughs> Solid. Uh, we take those. We we definitely take those. There's also a flip, which is very important for Koabara, because he loves things that flip themselves. Uh, what of Celestial being? Definitely uh, a heretic move over here in, one of the, in the one of. Uh, a lot of people really like to play two Celestial being, because, you know, Kuwabara's main fear is getting stopped, which definitely happened to me, but not because I didn't have Celestial being, it's just because Tyna really hated my Celestial being. Uh, <laughs> and he uh, stopped me from using it at any moment. Uh, Celestial Being is a very powerful card because it's stop stop. It's very important, and you know part of the reason why Ku most Kuwabara decks want to play Familiar Faces, which is a very bad three to, is because it removes itself to cancel an action, which is very important against Bang. But you know Celestial Being stop stun important against Evil Deck Fields Coffee Samba. Uh, the Enhance can be relevant, but nowadays we have a lot of way better momentum outlets for two momentum. Like, you know, just reverberate and things like that. So, <laughs> I don't get to use it very much. Uh, here, here's this, the, the biggest spi piece of spice in the deck. Uh, the Elf symbol protecting the protector. <laughs> uh, this used to be a familiar phases. But I decided that familiar phases was bad and achy and I didn't want it. So, I <laughs> replaced it with a Elf symbol protecting the protector. Which, let me tell you, this thing did work today. So, how do we get this in play? Uh, we have one, two... We have two foundations that share a symbol with it, which is <laughs> not good. However, however, uh, Spirit Sword Throws just says, Kuwabara in hands, build a foundation down from your hand. And that's all we need, baby. <laughs> that's true. It doesn't even have to chain. So if you play, like, Aragorn Smash into Spirit yeah. Sword Throws, you can still build it down. It doesn't have to chain. It just says, Kuwabara in hands, I'm going to get this protector. the protector. Right. Uh, literally what happened against Cutman, he had a Bamboo Blind Sight and 6 momentum out, and I just, like, gently put this down, and the turn could keep going. So that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, against stop, stop, stop. Against bang, stop, bang. Uh, against coffee samba, stops coffee samba. As long as you can get momentum, pretend the protector does everything celestial being does, without having to, you know, uh, stun itself for the turn. Yeah, and there, there are certainly times where, like, you know, you've played a, a string where you can intelligently, like, air ground smash, build it down, play a sword get longer, play some other thing, and then like end of chain build a protecting protector because you had an earth chain there. Right. So uh, I mean, it's it's smart. I like it. Yeah, and the momentum cost isn't that bad because we have Slay Rex, though, we get some momentum, and she's Alika, which gets some momentum. So even though uh, we're not very... We don't really get that much momentum because of who a Boris Enhance works, uh, we can at least, you know, always have it online because we need to defend ourselves. Uh, Castaway and Forgotten, another momentum used. Just... Uh, Steel is very important against a lot of decks. Uh, you don't want them to get any enhances off on their most powerful tempo attacks. Like, you know, if I'm playing against Yaki, I don't want her to aircraft smash just as much as you doesn't want me to aircraft smash. Mm. So we have to use Castaway to stop the things from killing us. Uh, didn't get to use the other response on it at all today. I didn't play into any low damage attacks that I cared about sealing while I had it out. So, but it's still very good, very important. Uh, really cool one of, uh, it flips itself so you can recycle it if you want to be rude, which is very important. Right. Uh, Innocent Breeze, again, we hate combo. Zero combo allowed, and no combo. Innocent Breeze says exactly that, no combo. Which, you know, sucks, sucks to be them, I guess. Uh, the other important thing about Innocent Breeze is that if your opponent has a very strong momentum outlet, you can, after the tech resolves, make, make it flip so they don't get the momentum. Which mattered in, in some occasions, where my opponent had a, like royal bodyguards that didn't want him to be online. So, Innocent Breeze... Very solid one of you set another one in against against uh, momentum heavy decks. Uh, here we go the uh, the only good dead luck and hands on water champion of combat. Pretty good uh, one. Champion of combat has the be as just an insane dead luck and hands. Like you know you put this down your opponent isn't allowed to go into deadlock unless they want to just die. Right. Uh, it's less good against Al Shield but it's still. Very good against Owl Shield because, man, at the end of a string, when you put that last attack in, it's just going to get plus seven, plus seven. 
even if the blood is not progressive. Right. Uh, it technically hands your attack, so your opponents in that like you reversal them. It's online, which is very good. And just in general, this is a card that you kind of have to play, just because if your if your opponent knows the water symbol, they know your deadlock is very suspect. So you need to get the champion of combat in to counteract them. And champion of combat was the reason I was able to actually finish the game against Siegfried, who had a 16 card staging area down, mm. just because I was able to continue playing very, you know, low difficulty attacks with champion of combat, and then ended with a lethal rose whiplash. Oh. Rose Whiplash is gone now. We just deleted it, dude. It's okay. I uh, know it's actually up here. Oh, okay. I was gonna go find it from the Yu Yu Hakusho. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just, just uh, Rose Whiplash wasn't allowed to block because it was on like, on like a seventeen. Right. So that's the foundation base. Very simple. A very small. This is a sixty card deck because we need to be able to see our pieces early. Right. And a lot of these is just defense, and what's not defense is uh, either uh, pivot into defense very easily. Or it's just like a hard card that we need to have just in case our opponent just doesn't build into deadlock at Champion of Combat. Right, yeah, I think the only pure offensive card in the deck is Champion of Combat. Yeah. That is, that is actually the only one. Everything else, like Genesis Gambler flexes offensively, defensively. God of Thunder flexes offensively and yeah. defensively. Still away, same thing. Still away is both offensive and defense. You know, it, it's, 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 uh, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. You know, and the, the, you, yeah. it, that's kind of UFS in general at the moment is just like your attacks do all the work for you. You got to figure out how to yeah. not die to your opponent's attacks that are also doing all the work for them. Yeah. Uh, onto the assets. We have a very non important asset. We don't need to talk about it. It's just Soul Calibur. Yeah, easy peasy. Done deal. <laughs> uh, we weapons good. We don't want to deal with weapons. Soul Calibur. <laughs> that, that, that's really it. That's all you can say about it. Uh, we don't get to do cool Yoshi things because Kuwabara is not from the popular game Soul Calibur 6. Uh, what a loser. Maybe in the 7 one. Maybe, maybe in the new one. He'll be there. <laughs> maybe he did. Uh, I definitely have seen people play as Kuwabara in Soul Calibur because of the character creator, but that's that's as far as it gets. <laughs> Uh, Tim, Tim, won't, Tim doesn't accept that as a rule, so you know, yeah. You know, no yeah, you can make for... any anyone in Soul Calibur character creator unleash this response, dude. <laughs> I I made Keiko. Does that count? <laughs> I think that counts, dude. I think that counts. Uh, here we go. The actually really important asset in the deck: uh, Cecilica and Lokaluha. Uh what Another part of the chart. Florida special. Cecilica is crazy. <laughs> yeah, the card's crazy. There are a lot of cards like uh, in this deck that we need to flip somehow. Like, you really want to flip poolside just so you can block with Generous Gambler. And Silica just does that and gives you a momentum that lets you use your Rolly Bodyguards every turn. Oh, yeah. Which is bonkers. Like, uh, the, the limiting factor on Rolly Bodyguards is that you need to have momentum for it, which is, needs you must have attacked during your turn, right? Nah, dude, I'll just get a momentum. Do it for free. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. And every time that you blow, like, once per enhanced, when you blow a foundation with this card, it gets plus two or minus two speed. So it either redoubles Generous Gambler, or gives you a free Generous Gambler of Avgat of Thunder. And both of those are crazy. <laughs> yeah, you know what, Jose, you and me using this card revived the water symbol. Yeah, basically. I, uh, uh, because Zach, Zach was running the engine, right? Uh, with his, with his spike. And his Zach spike was definitely running the... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, Slay Ride definitely gave it yet another tool to use, and Slay Ride has three symbols with C Saliga. I mean, that's pretty good. Suspicious. Yeah, it's suspicious. Let me tell you, suspicious. But but um, uh, you know, with, with they, just throughout this year, they've been giving just a little bit of love to the symbol, and it's and it's yeah. and it's it's at a point where it's 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 very good. It's not end all be all. It's not quite the all no. symbol or the evil symbol, but but it, it's very good again, which is it, nice to see. It, it's becoming really good at what it does. Yeah. And, you know, what? what's the issue with the water symbol? They can't block things. Minus four speed. Oh, good. We can block things now. <laughs> there you go, man. There you go. Beautiful. Just a very good card. It could go up to a three of if I'm allowing the deck to be bigger because right. you'd really want to see it. However, Kuwabara sees so many cards because of Aircraft Smash and Sword of Good Longer that you can honestly just pick it up very right. easily. Right. When we go to actions, we just have two of the other part of the Florida special. Know the power of the Abyss. Oh, yeah, dude. Wouldn't be a Florida deck without this card. What a beating. Uh... Uh, did you know Aircraft Smash is a reversal? Oh my god. What Crazy, a... right? <laughs> what a card. Did you know Reverberate is a reversal? <laughs> yeah, I did. You, you, the... yeah. you actually get to play two of this card because you have all the toys to pick up with. You can pick up yeah. Reflection Swing, and, you can pick up you know, Rose can... Whip, Precise Flow, yeah. Reverberate. You, you might say, you might say, what, what what situation do you have where you do use this and you pick up either of these? Well, not very many, because uh, you just pick up Rose Whiplash, which just picks up one of these. Like, right. 
Right. Yeah. All all, all yeah. answers lead to reverberator air grind smash because you can just pick up yeah. rose whip, right? Or they lead to precise blow in the case that you feel your opponent's going to keep attacking you. Right. 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 Which you know, do the power of the abyss most of the time. If I don't already have precise blow, if I don't have rose whip lash, it picks up precise blow. Right. Because right. the only situation where you pick up this card is that you have this card. Right. Yeah. That's basically it. Makes sense. So you know, clear out their speed, get a really good get a really good block, uh, perhaps even get a really good reversal. Insane card, uh, ten out of ten. <laughs> uh, it can it, it sometimes clocks your hand up a bit if your opponent just decides to build, but then just review it and it's fine. Right, and you don't mind sitting uh, on this card, you know, even though it is off symbol for 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 your deck, never. you just use it on their first attack and you try and you yeah. pick up precise blow and you just try to stop yeah. their turn. Or if, if you're a greedy bitch, you play sort of get longer into oh <laughs> another part of the epic and you just have an Eric match. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, important about Eggrun Smash, it triggers Slay Red for some reason. Get free momentum, dude. Uh, oh, there you go. Yeah, it also hits that. That's nuts. Wow. Yeah, there's, there's a, like, I don't, there's never a time where I did it, like, I wanted to hit a Slay Red, but it was like, oh, I guess I hit that. I'll get a momentum. Yep, yeah, sure, why not? I'll use it. <laughs> uh, onto the attacks. My favorite attack in this deck is not Eggrun Smash. It is, in fact, Spirit Sword Thrust. It has Spirit on it, which means it automatically gets two points from me. <laughs> uh, it has Desperation 4 for no reason It has EX2 for even more no reason And People that are older than me will recognize it As basically souped up Maxima Laser Yeah and It also Air kind of flexes like Aragorn Smash right? Aragorn Smash draws yeah. 3 random cards But Spirit Sword Trust just draws you 3 attacks From your staging yeah, it, area right? it, it recycles 3 things which is somehow stronger yeah. uh, Some of the time uh, You know add up to 3 face downs from your staging Up to your hand and it gets 3-3 three, three for it do you know, it's an 8 mid 8. It recycles your flip abilities, it recycles the attack that you built down with Kuabara, and the Kuabara enhance on this card is my favorite part about it, just because it's it's such great value. Like, you know, you're picking up three foundations and you one of those you can just build down. Which allows you to flex your turns in a very interesting way, in the same way that Meteor kind of does. Because just like Meteor lets you recycle uh a commit effect or a flip effect, Thor Thrust lets you recycle that flip effect. Like uh uh, often I flipped, I, fl I flipped Slay Ride, uh, I picked it up, and then I'll build it back down. Just that easy. Easy peasy. Or in the middle of your turn, I'm gonna build down God of Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, just like, it's Keep it's going. my it's my, like you know, I went I went AGS to the sword get longer. I found a God of Thunder. I'm gonna build it down, then I'm gonna keep going. Crazy. Uh, however, this is a very fairly static card. Uh, it doesn't have a block, which means it gets stuck in your hand sometimes. So. Just a very fair Yu Hakusho card. Amazing in this deck specifically. Uh, it's it's a four of because I, I just want to see it every time. Right. And it builds down for time to protect her, so you know, hype. <laughs> uh, air ground smash. Boy, what a beating. Uh, six I six for no reason. Uh, five diff, four diff a Yu School of in hands. Uh, draw three cards and ready one. I just don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nutty card, dude. It's, it's an insane card. Like, what you said about Kuwabara, all the attacks are printed huge for no reason. This is a 8 mid 8, 6 i 6, 6 mid 6. Yeah. It's it's just so big. Uh, yeah, and in retro, you get Glacial Assault, and that is the biggest beating that exists. Oh, yeah. Uh, in, in retro, the Spirit Sword Thrust becomes even meaner, because if you build on a Glacial Assault, uh, 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 Tribal Protector with it, it's like, oh, man. Yeah, there is. Like, gonna... Tribal Protector, gonna... not Glacial Assault. He's gonna play another air ground smash, isn't he? I'm gonna play another air ground smash, yes. <laughs> yeah, that card just says you play everything out of your hand. Insane. Uh, beautiful card, plus two low block. Thank Jasco. <laughs> Thank yeah. the Lord knows we need him. We need those low blocks, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I, I uh, really think that this. <laughs> what an interesting way to do X, because it made it so they couldn't print any four handers with the water symbol, you know? Yeah. They definitely never did that. And they never did. <laughs> and then they never did. And then here's Sargent Longer. Uh, Sargent Longer has the funniest name because you can scream it real loud. Exactly! It's the best part of the card. Uh, the artwork is really funny, where he's just, just straight up killing like five dudes. Yeah, yeah, this is where, where he's playing, he's fighting against, is it Byako that had all the beasts? Yeah, beasts? he's playing Byako because this is a beast summoning. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this has the other part, this is, this is, there's so much X, where X yeah. equals eight minus so, your thing. So, where Eggers Mash is water enhanced, this is good enhanced. Uh, built three, committed, phase down. Yeah. So it is a very weird version of draw three that is sometimes better if you have got it from there out or if you have generous gambler because it right. just means they get three fuel. Yeah. Uh, this card also it's also candidate for the most random desperation four of all time 
because Jesus Christ. I thought going into Desperation as Raptor felt good. Kuwabara's Desperation is 15 health. And the bonus you get from it is just absolutely insane. Uh, Fort of Circuit longer, build it down, Fort of Circuit longer. You now have three, you now have six committed phase down foundations that you can use however you want. Busted. Busted. And then you play a five to sword thrust and he's like, hey. And in the process, in the process of that, you played a six mid six, a six mid six, and then an eight mid eight. And the busted thing is that these are all tempo attacks, right? None of these are like kill you moves. These are just incremental advantage cards, right? Which is what Kuwabara just gets to use so like so powerful. Just yeah, yeah. Kuwabara is never one shotting you, right? He's no. just he's just getting he's he's incrementally just beating your face in with all of these really huge base damage attacks, right? He's getting huge. Yeah. Actually, I'm, I'm going to move this here because I want to talk about Moonset first. Oh, okay. Hey, yo, Moonset. Uh, Moonset's really good. Uh, people hate playing against it. You can build it down and loop it. Crazy, right? Uh, Moonset is a very, very good opener. And it's weird to call Moonset an opener because it's one diff less than these two cards. However, it, it allows these two cards to go through sometimes. Right. You know, by getting rid of uh, Dark Side of Carmel, you don't have Pure Heart out. Yeah, and, cool, and cool Bar makes the first attack, you know... You, you ignore progressive for one, you know? Right. So, you know, Moonset, very good. I never used the powerful on it for, for the entire tournament just because I really didn't have to. Uh, it just it was just a 3 6 safe attack. Again, 6 damage. Uh, block it, please. Uh, if they block it, they might get stuck when you play the Airgun Smash after it. Very good. Uh, I cite one more when my opponent has, like, chromatic foundations in the staging area or when, like, I'm going first. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say... The plus two hand size thing definitely diminishes the value of Moonset going first, which that's not even a bad thing. Fuck Moonset. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's some. There's some really like I, I had I, I my feelings about Moonset are are very mixed because of how powerful it is going first and how it feels more fair when you're when you're the second player because going first yeah. playing it on two is just such a <clears throat> brow beater, you know. Yeah. Um. I. I mean, if anybody remembers my Fade deck from Worlds twenty eighteen, uh, no, twenty nineteen, it was just Moonset into Dancing Flash, and we put their entire staging area into their hand. Uh. So I mean, it's it's uh it, it's just it's it's a little good going first, and with the extra two cards, I think it answers that problem a little bit, which yeah, is nice. Yeah, it's definitely worse, which felt very good because I no longer felt like the bad guy playing two of them turn two. <laughs> Nice. I, I was still very much the bad guy. Fair yeah. enough. Uh, <laughs> Ayo, it's Precise Blow. Listen, we, we, lo we love cards with Karama on them, even though most of them are kind of bad. But Precise Blow is for sure not one of them. Oh, that card's nuts. Uh, you know, response, please end your turn. Combo in hands, I guess it can do six damage too. <laughs> Sometimes, dude. Uh, yeah, my one okay. regret from Worlds was Kevin Broberg told me to put Precise Blows in my, in my life, Quan, and I was like, nah. And, uh, we didn't but, know at the time, dude. We just didn't know. Yeah, and then it kept getting attacked on turn one. You know what's really good at, into getting attacked on turn one? Power oh, of the Abyss into Precise Blow. Precise Blow. Yeah, nice build uh, turn you had there, idiot. Such a beating. Uh, precise Blow is beautiful. I cited one more when I feel like I need it. Uh, great defensive card. Just, 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 an, just an amazing uh, thing for a water deck, especially a deck as defensively oppressive as Kuwabara. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, Rose Whiplash. This card was just killing people left and right the other day. Huh. Uh, I killed Cutman twice with it, both both games. I killed Siegfried with it. I killed Cassander with it. I, I just... 9 low 9 is very, is a lot, you know? It's a big attack. And it does the worst thing that Kuwabara cool can do, which is heal. Just heal 4 for no reason. Yeah. And so the really powerful thing about Rose Whiplash is that as a reversal, it's a, it's a 9 low 9. It picks up any reversal, which kind of the air ground smash, reverberate, or precise blow, or, or deflection swing if you have it. And the worst part of all, it builds down. <laughs> yeah, so you keep it you keep it tucked away for later. You keep it tucked away for later. You can yeah. pick it up anytime you want if you're, you're in desperation. Yeah. You and I and talked like, about it quite a bit, and, and like I I don't I don't like it in Kuobara. I mean I, I think it's a greedy play, but like mm -hmm. you keep getting paid for it. So I mean I can't really can't really talk shit about it you know even when i check it it was like yeah man i deserve this i'm being i'm being ready root with this card <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's it, it won a lot of games it kept me alive a lot of times and it was just a very good offensive card a lot of the time uh 
standard Kuwabara losses the most oppressive play this card has, which is precise blow, precise blow, reversal, pick up a precise blow, build it down, they attack again, left for dead, pick it up. Uh, what are you doing? You know. <laughs> I, I had a Goro scoop to me because I did that to him. It was like, I don't want to do this anymore, man. <laughs> you right. healed eight. Yeah. How am I supposed to do damage here? Yeah. I, I, I healed eight and he took 18 damage that turn. Yeah. Just because he kept attacking. Uh, deflection Swing is here as a one of for a very important reason. Uh, being able to recycle your defensive cards on your staging area can be very important sometimes. It's like a fifth and copy of Spirit Throat Thrust, almost. Ex exactly. It's a... Like, the, the the copy in hands is really cool. It's very neat. That's not why you really play it. You play it so that you can recycle things that help you not die. Or, mm -hmm. like, you play it as the first attack in your turn if you had a really awkward hand and you just want to pick up any of the things you save for later. There you go. Um, a, poss a, poss like a possibility that you can do is that you can precise the block, get this, get deflection swing, when then you build this down so you know that you can have... Or Swift Lash anytime that you want. Mm -hmm. And I never copied any enhances with Deflection Swing this game, this tournament, but it was a card I definitely liked having in there just because it recycled a lot of... Yeah. And and sometimes, like, the rudest thing you can do with Deflection Swing is you seal their, their Meteor, spawn yeah. Reversal Deflection Swing, and be like, ha ha, I get your Meteor. You fool. <laughs> you fool. Anyway, powerful 12. <laughs> Wait, powerful 12. <laughs> <laughs> because it just does that. And respond with Kuabara for the swag points. Yeah, but for the... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you got one of Swimming Bird? Yeah, we have one of Swimming Bird. Uh, definitely the card that least did work this tournament was Swimming Bird. Mm -hmm. uh, which is not no no points against Swimming Bird, just points towards all of these, you know? Yeah. It, it's just a big, strong card. It's definitely a lot less bigger than I remembered it be, because I was Dr. Wily. And Dr. Wily gets face downs a lot more active than Kuabara does. Sure. Yeah, you're recycling your. Downs. Yeah, you're re you're recycling your face downs. You recycle them. So you know, Swimming Bird was very good. It was never like huge. It never killed anybody, but it was a nice thing to have. Uh, I think the biggest takeaway from this, from this event is that I would replace Swimming Bird with Bamboo Blind Slice, Scratch Glazando, or Deep Freeze. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, that, that, that's that, that's my biggest takeaway. I do uh, love Deep we Freeze, dude. There are enough weapons here where Bamboo Blind Slice and Scratch Glazando are definitely possibilities. Uh, Scratch gives us another low block we can pick up with uh, No the Power of the Abyss, which is important. Mm. And Deep Freeze is just a good opener. So, you know. Uh, Swimming Bird, definitely replaceable. Still very good. And then Reverberate. Yeah, it, uh, the 21 best, damage. Yeah, you know, the best 4 in the format, dude. Uh, 21 damage. Uh, Cisalika gives it 2 speed for free. No reason. Uh, uh, this thing gives it a momentum for free. No reason. Uh, yeah. Multiple 2. Seven mid seven, seven mid seven, and seven mid seven. Very good, very powerful. Killed a couple people this this tournament, and when he didn't kill people, it definitely set set them up to die. Right. Um. In the rematch against Cutman, I had a turn where I went attack string, reverberate, precise blow, precise blow, reverberate. But he actually died to the precise blow. So it was like, oh, okay. So. <laughs> Did you ever have a situation where you had a reverberate, built it down after multiple two, and then picked it up, and then and then did it again? Did it again. I I I never had enough momentum to do that. Oh, okay, okay. I was because that's something that I that I that I would have liked to do. Yeah. Um, another reason why I really love reversal in Kuabara isn't just because they're free since they built down, but a lot of your defensive capabilities involves stuff stuff in their card pool. Mm -hmm. uh, in the game against Cutman, the way I killed them is because I went Royal Bodyguard, second Royal Bodyguard. Luck with precise blow, respond Rose Whiplash, uh -huh. and he has four in pool for now. Yeah, that sure <laughs> is a uh, thirteen low for whatever. Nah, dude, we got generous gambler. That's uh, that's a oh, seventeen. Yeah, low. that's seventeen low for for the life total. Yep. Nice. Yeah. So overall, I, I had a very fun time playing this deck. It was quite strong. Uh, I I did I I went to this tournament not wanting to lose to aggro, and that's certainly what I did. Yeah. Hey, you did really, really well. Thank you. Uh, second in Swiss. Woo woo. Uh, sideboard is uh, just just kind of kooky. Uh, the way I like to do my sideboard is I just put in the extra copies of the one of the two of. Yeah. So that because that's you are my son. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I just want to say that, uh, you know, Bromley taught me everything he knows and some things he didn't, so fair enough. It's true. You, you, you keep doing things that I never thought you had to do. Like, kill yeah. me. Like, yeah, I, hey, you know. Uh, the only card that's not on the main board is Rhythmic Fighting Style, mm -hmm. because Water lost all of its throw hate when uh, your boy Mega Man rotated, so we gotta play Rhythmic Fighting Style to avoid dying throws, and right. to avoid our opponent from recycling the defensive pieces. Right. Uh, the other, you know, you, you explained why this card was good. Breaker 1 removes their thing, very good for blocking. A lot of attacks are mid, precise blow dunks them. Yeah. Quite simple. Uh, another Venomous for drawing cards, another Soul Calibur for weapons. Again, we hate combo. Yeah, we also uh, hate dying to Dark Kirito. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, man, I forgot. I forgot to explain the most important thing about our, our water Kuwabara. So, uh, good Kuwabara, decent, loses incredibly to Dark Kirito. The best answer he has is here in Innocent Breeze. Yeah. Earth Kuwabara, very very powerful because it has uh, energy absorption. Loses hard to Dark Kirito. Right. Water Kuwabara loses less to Dark Kirito because we have. Innocent Breeze, which is drained by a kids, and we have Precise Blow, which seals it. Right. Yeah. You get, so, you get Bofa. Yeah, you get yeah, Bofa. Good, you, good only gets Innocent Breeze. Yeah. If you ever want a reason why you want to play Kubara, it's because it answers Dark Chirito very yeah. easily. Yeah. So, you know, Innocent Breeze. Dunks on Dark Chirito, very good. Bang. Bang is just very strong. I never used it during the entire tournament, but uh, I'm sure that if, if I would have ran into a very powerful 500, I would have used it. Yeah. I, I, it's definitely hard to shove a bunch of actions into a five-hander, and yeah. Kuwabara is certainly a five-hander, you know? Yeah. Um, especially defensively, so so you don't want to get clogged. Like, I know some people play out of your leagues and things like that, but I, I think you made the right call. Yeah. Uh, the other Pretender Protector, in case they're running Bang. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, another Seth Chippy, in case they're running Stop or Bang. So, you know, Stop or, like, as a stun deck. You don't want to lose to those. The extra precise blow because this card is very good on defense, and the extra moon setting because they have anything rude. Right. Very simple sideboard. Yeah, and and there's you know if you're playing into a very defensive deck like I like the two one precise blow sideboard, mm -hmm. um, because sometimes if you're playing in an aggro deck you're like well I don't need moon set, I need precise blows yeah. you know, and then yeah. against uh, very defensive decks where who, who have a bunch of answers to things you'd be like I don't need precise blow I need moon sets you know I'm, I, I need, need moon set yeah I need more of these uh, things. Typically. The card that comes out for Precise Blow is Deflection Swing. Okay. And typically the card that comes out for Moonset was Swimming Bird. Makes sense. Well, yeah, because you, you weren't feeling the Swimming Bird. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wasn't feeling it. And uh, a lot of the decks I was running into definitely want, definitely didn't want to get blocked by Precise Blow. Right. Uh, you know, I played into Elena. Uh, that was just a very unfortunate matchup for Elena. Uh, Elena was running a lot of very uh, small ranged 4 diffs and 3 diffs. Mm. And man, that was just not doing anything against Kuwabara. Right. It's it just a really bad matchup. Uh, I let him hit me with eight of eight attacks. Uh, he burned me for seven using uh, Buck Spray. <laughs> and then comes my turn, and this thing gives me eight damage. Oh Jesus! So unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, then I play, you know, then I play against Mike Hardiman. Weird match, but we somehow pulled it through. Uh, you know, he definitely wanted, didn't want to get precise blowed. Right. Uh, Played against Lord Raptor, does not want to get precise blowed. Yeah. Played against Siegfried, also doesn't want to get precise blowed. Uh, played against uh, round round five. Cutman absolutely does not want to get precise blowed. Jesus. Yeah, Kamo deck does not want that. Yeah, and then Yoshimitsu also doesn't want to get precise blowed, just because you yeah. know plus one difficulty. You know, it's pretty good. Yeah, well, no, only I get to give you plus one difficulty. You can't give me plus one difficulty. I can, I can do whatever I want, Dad. <laughs> So. so how did you feel about the plus two hand size? I feel like my opponents felt it a lot more than I did. Okay. Uh, Kuwabara with plus two hand size is honestly just an amazing feeling because the one thing Kuwabara never gets to do is build well and hold blocks. Right. I, talking about going second, that. right? Yeah, going, going second. Kuwabara yeah. going in second, he has to build and hold like a non-block or like a real bad block in his hand. Right. Because a lot of these cards just don't have blocks on them. Mm-hmm. And you have to run. You have to run poolside. You have to run sword thrust. You have to run venom. It's like you just have to eat it up. Yeah. But uh, those two hand sides let me keep good blocks in my hand that I was able to use, you know, very effectively. So I, I never like went to, to an insane build. Uh, the most insane build I had was four foundations and an asset, and then keeping two blocks in hand. Right. Which felt really good, but you know, it's not like anything crazy. 
Well, that's, that's good for a five-hander. That's really important. I mean, there were a bunch of – I mean, well, there were a bunch. There were two five-handers in, in top cuts, right, and a bunch of seven-handers. Yep. No six-handers. Uh, and I don't think that's because six-handers are bad. Like, some people are going to say that. But it's just it's just like, um, you know, the, the, the big six-handers that people were worried about were like, there was a Fehu bubble. There was a Kotal who bubble, you know. Yep. Um, and those are both characters who were like – really starved for cards you know yeah. akuma with two extra ha- cards in his hand is terrifying to me yeah you know uh, same with um, rando you know and there were two randos rando. uh, so shout out to devin yeah shout uh, out to devin and, and alex uh, marco of course lilith with two cards with the two extra cards very, you know very oh, good yeah, too yeah yeah i I, like, I so i think i think that you know as people test more and things like that, they'll find that six handers were oh nightmare was also right in the bubble yeah yeah makes sense yeah yeah just yeah, six, makes sense you know, six handers are really just starved for those opening cards, right? So, uh, it, it, yeah, it, it, it's very, very good for five handers. It's very, very good for everybody. I mean, like five handers, I think feel it the most because they do get to actually have a consistent build, and that's yeah. really important for them. Five handers sometimes just get hosed. You know, they, they just like, oh, I drew all the text. Yeah. Oh. yeah, like I was talking about with about Keenan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, and and but did you do you feel anything like like you, would you change anything about it? Uh, about the plus two hand size? Yeah. So, uh, the way I felt, you know, going, se- going, going second Skuabara, Barra, I felt very good. I was able to defend through my opponents, like, turn two poke. Uh, going first Skuabara, Barra, I felt like my my pokes were doing less, which, you know, fine, they're pokes. Like, I don't actually mind. I liked that Moonset was doing less work. Uh, my opponents were more consistently able to block Aragorn Smash well during my turn two, which, you know, that's, that's, all, that's all fine and dying. That's all good with, you know? That's what we want. That's what we want. That's right? what we want. We, we, we want the games to be fair. Uh... What I would change about the plus two hand size, I can't really think of anything right now. There you go. To be honest, That's my bit. It, 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 it just felt good. Sick. Uh, perhaps perhaps seven handers get a little too paid for it, because I'd certainly had, you know, uh, Cassandra built six foundations and three assets on me uh, their turn one, and I certainly had Barrett Bryant, you know, build like six with Lord Raptor turn one, mm. and still hold three cards to block with. So, so seven handers. No, no, you can seven-handers. Yeah, seven-handers because they have access to, uh, um, not out of your league, over the top in sense of morals. They can just explode on the board uh, with a, just like a turn two staging area for no reason. All so, right, hear yeah, me that, out. That hear can... me out. Yeah. Since we're banning four-hand size from the format, what if we give turn two the air ground smash to treatment? Where ev- everybody builds like an eight-hander. Everybody builds a candy. Right? So seven hand sides would only get one, six hand sides would get two, and five handers would get three. And four hand sides, uh, who cares about the You know, there was a Whitzel, I think, actually. But yeah. four handers would get eight. <laughs> <laughs> and, Yo, but, that could make it so playable. But, we ban, but we're but we banning four hand sides. They're never making another four hand sides forever, right? Right. So that would make that would make everybody have that, 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 that same build state, right? So it wouldn't just be like the weird awkward situation where like seven handers are building seven and things like that um yeah c- cap it at eight yeah cap it at eight uh a yoshimitsu would be way 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 too strong i think at that yeah. point but yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, uh, a lot that's of, fine a lot of five handers suddenly become mad scary uh yeah i i think if you keep it as is and just cap seven handers at eight that's fine yeah. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I, I would be worried about five handers getting too good because then, then they're getting three, right? But I was just, I'd also want seven handers to get something out of it. So that was all I was right. thinking, right? But yeah. it could just be, it could just be like maybe you cap it at seven. You know, maybe maybe that's what you do, um, uh, or 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 seven handers only get one or something like that. You know? Yeah. So I'm sure it can be it can be tooled around with, but but yeah. I'm also okay with just the the plus two. I mean, yeah. se- seven yeah. handers seven handers trying to be aggressive uh, is nothing new, and. Yeah. Um, um, I'm cool with it. Yep. Cool. So, you, have, uh, you have any shout outs to give out, my man? Uh, to Bromley, of course. You know, oh. to Phil, to G- uh, JHP for loving Kukumunga. <laughs> right. You know, to everyone that, that, that was cheering us on at the end. You know, it's very weird for people to cheer for Kuabara, but, you know, uh, I think people were enjoying the, like, the cool plays that were happening here. Uh, on stream, a lot of people were like, cons- like, every time the match got close to the time, we were talking, like, okay, so does Jose have to just like mill him out here. Just say you have to like you know just defend till the time runs out. And every time I was just like, nah, dude, I'm trying to kill him. Yeah, always, always trying to kill him. O- yeah. Always trying to kill him. You know, none of my matches went to time, which is weird considering you know like the kind of ca- character Kuwabara emanates. But I'm generally trying to end these people's lives here. You know. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm very happy that none of my matches went to time. 
because you know I don't want to keep people hostage. Uh, I, I want the games to be fair and balanced. I just want to, I just want it to be a defensive character this time, you know? Right. Yeah, you want to be able to have you some play. Push, he's a defensive character. Exactly. Yeah. Hard agree, man. All right. Uh, well. Yep. Thanks for joining this the uh, the sh- the uh, video people. You know, check out our uh, Teespring and Patreon and uh, our Twitch channel over at un- Unstuff. It's very easy. You, it'll be on the description. Uh, buy your coffee mugs, dude. Um, buy your coffee. Mugs. Yeah. And it, and and you know, every little bit it helps. But if if you if you don't feel like doing that, you know, just leave us a comment. Subscribe to the. Uh, to the YouTube channel, leave a like, all that jazz. Uh, uh, and if you want more Jose, you know, leave a comment. We want more Jose. Hashtag. Also, a hashtag we want less Jose if you're on the opposite side. Of the <laughs> uh, we want this to be a fair fight. Right. <laughs> <laughs>